thing, every morning it's sacrosanct. I meditate and I get a message from Sanaya. So he looks at me sleepy, he says, how about I just roll over and you can sit in that chair right there. <laughs> okay, that'll work. So he's quiet, I go and I sit in the chair and I attune, which I'll teach you how to do tomorrow. And I get a beautiful message from Sanaya. I write it down on the pad of paper that I have in my lap and I'm ready to come out of this meditation and I realize my husband is sleeping, why don't I play some more because I had such good experience the day before with that Merkaba thing, right? So I built that shape around me in my mind and I dial it up. I make it really big and suddenly I'm aware of this powerful presence. The energy is absolutely as strong as that which I experienced when I invited Jesus in, but it was different. And I said to this presence, who are you? And I heard Archangel Michael. Do you know what my response was? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I'm still in this military mindset that archangels are woo-woo things, right? They're not real. Tonight is about redefining what is real, right? How are you limiting yourself with your beliefs? I didn't used to think angels were real until Sanaya came to me, and I know that some of them are angels. But archangels? I don't know. And now here's one in my presence in a hotel room in Phoenix. <laughs> so what have I told people? Play. Be willing to play. So I realized I don't have to tell Ty about this. Right? <laughs> So I sit and I ask him, why have you come? And he proceeds to give me a bunch of teachings. The very first thing he said is, I come to all those who fight for freedom and stand for love. Mm -hmm. I liked that. I said, now I don't know the archangels, which one are you? He says, the one with the sword. I said, oh, I can validate that. And so I'm writing and writing and writing. And the last things that he said to me did not make sense. These are my actual notes from that morning, scribbled. He said, Hebrews, this is coherence. This is coherence, a gift. And then he disappeared. Well, I thanked him or what I thought was him. And I came out of that expanded state. Ty's still sleeping over there in the bed. So I get my computer and I look up Hebrews in the Bible. Because I thought when Jesus came to me, he gave me Thessalonians and Corinthians. Isn't Hebrews a book in the Bible? I'm going to quick go through it. And I scan through the whole book of Hebrews. And there is nothing relevant there. I won't stretch something to make it fit, but there's nothing about Archangel Michael. There's nothing about the teachings that he gave me. So I thought, what many of you think, maybe I just made that up. Any of you here guilty of that thought? <laughs> yes, all right. So now you remember, I'm a retired Navy officer. My husband's a retired destroyer captain. He has put up with a lot with me in the last few years. <laughs> I am not about to tell him, honey, I was just visited by an archangel. So I didn't. I didn't say a word. We get in the car and we're driving to Sedona. We're going to arrive early. My presentation is until later in the day. So we had picked out a spot to go hiking. I'm the navigator. I have the map. I realize, ooh, we're in Arizona. Dr. Gary Schwartz lives in Arizona. So I'll give him a call. So I get out my cell phone. Hey, Gary, we're in Arizona. I'm not going to see you. He says, where are you going? Oh, we're going to Sedona. He says, oh, Sedona, I was just there with my friend Michael. Yes. <laughs> I said, oh. And I, I, I think for a minute, I said, no, 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 no. I am not going to tell the research scientist, Dr. Gary Schwartz, that I was visited by an archangel. He's not going to want to work with me anymore. I have no evidence about this at all. So I said, oh, that's nice, that's nice. And I you know, end the phone call. And I go back to thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, though. That was a, that was a coincidence, but we can ask for a sign. So silently, because I still don't want to tell Ty about this, I say, if that was Archangel Michael, I'm going to need a really big sign in Sedona. And we left it at that. But I was so rattled by all of this that I failed as a navigator because I missed the turn for the trail that we had picked. And so I told Ty, honey, the trail's three miles back. You want to turn around? And he said, no, that's OK. There are trails everywhere. Look, here's one right here. Let's just pull off and we'll hike here. Beautiful trail, 
This is a picture of it. It was gorgeous. It was February. Snow was still falling, this light dusting. Absolutely beautiful. These photos that you see are from that day. Well, my husband is the quintessential Boy Scout, and he believes that when out in nature, one must be quiet. So we're hiking very quietly, and I, you know, it's really hard to be quiet for long periods of time. And I, I want to say things, and then I stop. So we're silent, silent. So I heard a couple up ahead of us. There's nobody in sight the whole time we're hiking until all of a sudden we come upon this couple hiking. And as we pass them, I said, "Good morning." You know, I was a foreign language major in college but I don't recognize a word you two are saying. What language is that? And this lady on a trail that I was not even supposed to be on turned to me and said, Hebrew. <laughs> and I said, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and so we kept on hiking and there we leave them behind. And I started to giggle and Ty says, what? And I said, I just had the coolest synchronicity, but I'll tell you about it later. So he knows nothing about what's going on here. We get up to this beautiful scenic overlook. We stop to take pictures, and here comes the couple again. This is really them, okay? Here they come, and they come up to me, and we start doing that, oh, where are you from, where are you from thing that people say. And Ty said, we're from Florida, and they said, we're from Israel. Great, they really are Hebrews. And then the woman said to Ty, why are you here? And he totally su surprised me by answering, we're here to show my wife's documentary. Why? Because what's the next question they're going to ask? <laughs> yes, what's it about? And he knows as well as I do that we don't normally tell people that I'm a medium when we just meet them because a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. So he's now said that, and of course, the very next question they say is, what's it about? I surprised myself by replying, well, it's about my unexpected transition from US Navy officer to my current work as a medium. Why I said the whole thing, I didn't know at the time. But this woman looks at me, she crosses her arms, and she says, medium? I am a scientist. US Navy officer, I can believe, but medium? I don't think so. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, as a scientist, you would understand that it's all just a higher frequency that I'm tuning into. It's here, but normally we can't attune to that. But for some reason, I can. It's just frequency. And her husband said, oh, I understand all about frequency. I'm an engineer. And my husband said, oh, then you might be interested in the fact that yesterday on the plane coming out here, my wife and I were discussing antennas and how you could fine tune your frequency by pretending there's an antenna in your field. And this Hebrew speaking man on the trail that I was not supposed to be on said, oh, I specialize in antennas. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a coincidence, right? Uh, so. We had, it, it was very clear that this lady was not going to believe anything about mediums. So I just said, well, it was nice talking to you. And we continued on up the trail. We get to the end of the trail. There's nowhere else to go. And here they come again. <laughs> and I hear very clearly in my mind, ask him his name. And I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> if his name is Michael, I'm going to have to really change my whole way of thinking. So I said to Ty, I'll be right back. But as I was trotting over to them, I felt very strongly that his name was not Michael, but I was supposed to ask anyway. Funny, huh? But it just that sense. So that's why when I went up to them, feeling like a stalker now, <laughs> I said, excuse me, but your name isn't Michael, is it? And he said, no, it's not. And I said, oh, OK. Because this morning, I heard in meditation Hebrew. And here you are on the trail speaking Hebrew. And I also heard the name Michael. And these two looked at each other. And she looked at me, and she said, 
I am Mikhail. <laughs> and then she says, but there is no E in it. <laughs> I said, it doesn't matter. It's the same name, different language. How do you explain that? And she said, I cannot explain it. But if you are so good, what is my specialty? And I said, oh, it doesn't work like that. You see, this morning, I was in an expanded state, and I was attuned, and here it was. <laughs> and you know, she looked vindicated, like, you see, this woman, she can't do what she says. And I was feeling let down until her husband saved the day, bless his heart. He turned to me and he said, use your antenna. <laughs> and I suddenly realized I had nothing to lose. I would never see these people again, and he was absolutely right. So standing there on the trail, I turned to the side, <coughs> closed my eyes, forgot about them, constructed that shape of the star tetrahedron around me, made it big, shifted my awareness, connected with higher consciousness, and asked, what is her specialty? And I turned back and I said, cellular biology. And she went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she regained her composure and she said, but not exactly. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's close, though, because you also work with DNA. I'm hearing this. And she said, not exactly. And her husband turns to her, and he's whispering like this, like, come on, give the lady a break. But I could tell she was very much in a box, and this would have taken her way outside of her limits. She couldn't handle it. So I thanked them, and I just walked on air all the way back down the trail, thinking, oh, my God. Gosh, there is no other explanation for this than that archangels are real. That was really Archangel Michael, and now how do I have to adjust my worldview again? And I get to the bottom of the trail, and there's the trail log. There are their names in the trail log. I take a picture of it. Sure enough, they're from Israel, and here they come down the trail. <laughs> <laughs> so I run to my car, to the trunk, and I get out my notes from that morning's meditation and one of my cards. And I walk up to them. I hand them a card. I said, if you're interested in the work I do, you can look me up online. And oh, by the way, these are the notes from the meditation. Look, this is what I heard this morning. Hebrew, see? And here you are speaking Hebrew. And I don't know what this part is, I said, but I heard this is coherence. This is coherence, a gift. And these two Hebrew-speaking folks on the trail, who, who, who he specializes antennas, looked at each other, and she looked at me and said, we both specialize in coherence. Oh my God. Times two. Oh. They were the gift. Oh my God. To this day, I am not able to wrap my head around how that happens, that we stopped for breakfast after that meditation, we stopped for gas, slowing our trip down, changing our trip. I wasn't even supposed to be on that trail. Lord knows how many turns they took to bring us right together on that trail. What is real? What is real? Isn't it fun when you play? When you play? So we get to our hotel, and it's too early to check in. So it's now freezing. Freezing rain is now coming down, no more snow. And I said to Ty, you know what? There's that row of gift shops over there. I am hearing very clearly, there's something for me in one of those stores. <laughs> Ladies, this works every time. <laughs> Ty's smart. He said, I'm staying here where it's warm. You go ahead, Suzanne. So I pull up my hood and I cross the street. There were several gift shops, but I was clearly drawn to one. And I walk in the door and right inside the store in a glass case is this. Wow. A little bronze pendant, the protective shield of Archangel Michael. Wow. Now, granted, this is Sedona where probably every gift shop is going to have something from Archangel Michael, right? But how many are going to have 
this painting right over that shield. Oh, a star tetrahedron. Yay. Did I need any more validation? Is that cool? You don't need to stretch the truth when spirit will give you these most amazing stories. So then I hear, go next door and read about Archangel Michael. So I go next door, and sure enough, there is Doreen Virtue's book of angels, which until that time, I'm sorry, Doreen, I had poo-pooed, you know, archangels, that's for other people, right? But I'm coming out of the box now. So I get in there, and I start reading about Archangel Michael. And it says, you will know Michael's around because you're drawn to the color purple. Well, as we had come off that trail, this girl had been walking by me in this beautiful purple fleece. And I remember even saying to her, oh, I love that color purple, where I normally wouldn't talk to somebody on the trail. Since that day, I've been wearing my purple amethyst ring just to remember that sacred day on the trail. But I'm flipping through the book, and I read a phrase that sounds kind of familiar to me. I just heard it recently. And it said, you will know Michael is around because you entertain strangers that remind you of him. And they're like messengers for you. Well, I had just entertained two strangers on the trail, and they were certainly messengers of my experience. But where had I heard that exact phrase? So I entered those words from that book about Michael in my phone, in Google. And I came up with this. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Do you know where that comes from? The Bible. <laughs> Hebrews. <laughs> 13 two. How great is that, huh? Is that great? Now, I know, I know, I know that those two people on the trail were not angels. They didn't just appear. You think angels can just appear in human form? <laughs> but they were real people and they were definitely a gift to me but how do I know they're real because their name was in the log because I had my angels send her angels a note have her email me and she did and at the bottom of her email is her name a professor at a university in Israel teaching not cellular biology but structural biology now you have to understand how this works connecting with the other side. It's very difficult for those in spirit to put a word or concept in your mind you've never heard of. And I had never heard of structural biology. So they gave me the next best thing, cellular biology. When she asked, what's my specialty? You know why it's the next best thing? This is what it says online. Structural biology is of great interest to biologists because macromolecules carry out most of the functions of cells. And remember how I got Oh, and you work with DNA? And she said, not exactly. Deoxynucleic, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's DNA. Structural biologists play with nucleic acids. So very close. You know what that woman on the trail said to me that day? She looked at me after I showed her my notes, and she said, this ability you have, you use it to speak to dead people? <laughs> And I said, yes, I do. And she said, don't you do anything useful with it? <laughs> I hope so. I hope that you find it's useful to, to understand there's so much more to this reality. And I